Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and Above AVL. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at, yes, ADJ's My DMX5. Now, let me tell you, as we start to get into this, one of the things that I honestly never thought I would be saying here, not a, a year ago, uh, even two years ago, I don't think I would have been saying, is that we're reviewing, we're looking at, and giving a positive opinion on the MyDMX software, okay, and hardware package. So this is from ADJ, and if you've been around for a while, MyDMX and the family of MyDMX products has been around for years, and whenever people have asked me about it over time, quite honestly, up until this point, we've generally steered people away from it. And a lot of people have had a lot of trouble with this software, my DMX3 or my DMX Buddy, ultimately because it had a lot of issues. A little less than a year ago, my DMX5 was announced and this piece of hardware came out. This is the box you get when you purchase it. Now, just from a hardware perspective, this is really cool because you get four DMX outputs. It comes with two universes, so you can do it universe one, two, one, two. So you get two three pins and two five pins for each output. You can hook it up via USB to your Mac or PC. You can hook it up over network. You just got to power it then on the USB-C. Once you're powered and you're building your show, you can go ahead and save 10 presets and then a whole bunch of pages on this box. So for a lot of use cases, especially if you're in an installed building with where unskilled people might need to turn stuff on, it's really awesome in my opinion that this comes with an ability to just have this box power it up by USB and people can press the buttons, right? People who don't know anything about the lighting system who you don't want in your software. And they can trigger scenes that you've saved here on the SD card that does come with the box when you buy it. Really stinking cool. But the more important part is, from a software perspective, is it stable? Does it work well? And does it help people create amazing things with lighting? And for finally, and I never again thought I would ever be saying this about my DMX, yes, and if it's right for you, then it does have our recommendation now, which again, it just blows my mind because I just, I never thought I would recommend this software, but they fixed a lot of the issues that it's had. In my opinion, the only thing it's lacking in right now is good tutorials, which of course we're gonna fix that. We're gonna have them in Learn Stage Lighting Labs. We're gonna do stuff here so that you guys can learn how to use this stuff and how to make great events. That was the hardware. The most important part by far is gonna be the software. So let's hop on the computer, take a look, and I wanna run you through the basics of how it works, talk about some things I like, talk about some things where, you know what? If this software doesn't quite, I don't wanna say it doesn't measure up, but just some places where you go, okay, if I'm running into these kind of problems, then I need to upgrade to something that's more advanced, right? So let's dive in, take a look here at my DMX5, on the computer. So we are all plugged up here and we have our virtual lighting rig. Now, some of the things I really like about this software is, you know, you can get into the settings and there are a number of things you can turn on or turn off that can be really quite helpful. Uh, one of those is the ability to just automatically load your last show anytime you launch the program, which I definitely recommend that's in the settings menu. So the interface is pretty simple. When you first launch my DMX, you have a patch window. It's called setup, which Makes a lot of sense, right? And in here, you can go find your lighting fixtures and add them in. If your fixtures are not in the built-in library, if you're on the internet, you can get to their cloud profiles that are available through the Nicolati cloud. If you don't find what you need in the cloud profiles, then you can go and request them through an account on that website. Now, when you go and request them, they're gonna tell you it's gonna take like two weeks or you can pay more to have it done quickly. Let me tell you something. I've yet to have a profile that wasn't created in a couple hours, which is amazing. Like across the board, across all of the lighting consoles that exist out there. Yes, you can build your own on the website if you're in a pinch, but like I've never seen some a company build them as fast as these are. So you can always get them from the cloud, you can do your own user cloud fixtures, and then this is the fixtures that are already in the project. Patching is really as simple as selecting a fixture, setting what universe it's on, 
the starting address, number of fixtures, and the fixture number, the index as they're calling it here. Then, you know, whether you have one or many, you can go, you can do just one, you can do, say, three. You can go and drag out individuals as well or set up a multiple. Okay, so we're just going to delete that guy. But that can be super duper helpful. It's just really pretty simple, pretty easy. For LEDs, there's also RGB and similar matrices, matrices and strips. So you can bring in a matrix of pixels and actually get quite meaningful control of it here. You see here, there's multiple universes. You can do apparently a hundred. The box is licensed to two universes out of the box. So you get two, but you can add on more for 99 bucks each, which is really, really not bad. Let's dive into the software itself. Or actually, before we do, here in the setup page, there is some ability to also set movement limits to say, hey, you know, I don't want this light to go past X point. And you see, as I move it, right? It snaps. It's actually showing me the edge of the movement. So if you don't want it to go into people's eyes, you keep it down to here, right? And then the software is going to keep that light from moving into that space. Same with brightness. You can set a brightness limit. Maybe you get to a venue and just for that day, you need to set some of your fixtures less bright because they're just like, you know, overpowering everything else. You can do all of that, invert, pan, tilt, swap, all the stuff you typically see in a professional lighting console is all available here. And it all seems to work really well. I haven't encountered really any bugs in my working with this software. Onto the control side, once you've got all your fixtures in, they kind of come up in a row, but you can go ahead and you can pull this guy into an edit mode and you can actually adjust the fixtures. You can move them around, etc. And of course, I'm totally missing where that is at this moment, which is just what happens when you go to do a review. It's, I believe it's actually just in here. You just move stuff around and then boom, back to control. It's right where you left it. This can look like a lot, but let's talk about what we're seeing here. So essentially on the main control page, you basically have what are called banks, which are kind of sets of cues, right? Like here, I've got one for all sorts of different colors and I can click them. And on my pars in the backdrop right there, you can see all of those different colors, right? Ta-da, it's so nice. Within a bank by default, though there are settings, all of the cues just simply override each other within that bank, which I think for a lot of use cases that can really make a lot of sense, but bank to bank, they won't. Okay, so like here's some some cues. Hey, it's Christmas, no fade time, um, etc. All right. Now, one thing that my DMX is missing here is kind of a palette based approach, like a more professional lighting console would have, so that when you get to a given venue, you could define what this straight out for this particular light is and have it change all the cues that you built basically off of that palette. Now, I say it's missing this functionality, but it does have what's called the super scene. Okay, so the super scene in my DMX is very cool because it allows you to just drop, create a super scene. So you, you check a box over here or uh, you actually press that you want it to become a super scene on a on a, uh, a little dashboard. Uh, if I go to a different one, I can show you. Yeah, here you hit super scene, then it turns into something like this. And then you have this whole timeline where you can add even audio files, different cues, etc., and have them all work at the same time. And as you see, it's just looping a three second loop, but I could actually adjust it. And there I've actually set a curve, I believe on the red. I don't know what I did, but I can adjust the total length as well. And so, then it would change um, that red cue, let's see, is these guys? Regardless, and it would change and I could bring in a different cue as well, like this green one. So I could go back to my super scene, grab this green, throw it in here. And so now you see, it goes from red to green all within one queue within a super scene. So they do different things, but it, it can definitely be kind of a replacement for a palette based programming approach. Um, just if I undo things where it's like, okay, you know, this is a scene that has a uh, position and it has color for two different lights in it. It generally overrides what's being played over here. Whenever it plays, as you can see, I've taken this white, and now this takes over. But then of course, if I play that super scene again, it will take over where this was turned on white. So based on what you play, whatever's latest is what's going to play through. And that generally makes sense and matches what other pieces of lighting software does. Generally makes a lot of good sense. Okay, um, effects. Okay, so effects, actually let's talk about editing cues first. 
So editing cues in my DMX5 is if you are used to a traditional lighting console programming approach, it will drive you about insane for the first while until you understand how it works. So every cue or scene that you have here has this bar on the right, this colored bar that matches the bank color. This bar is your selector for editing. So like I've now played this scene and I've selected it for editing and I see it here in my editor. So now I can go add anything I want to it. Like say I go and I add color to it and I grab a nice green off this color wheel and now to save it, I do nothing. Okay, so those of you that have used regular lighting consoles, that feels like bonkers, right? You literally do nothing. Like you can just click off of it, you know, go to something else. It's there, it's saved, you can see that, right? Um, and so this little bar on the right is your selector and then you simply select your lights and you adjust what they're doing. And there's a lot of really neat things you can do. So that brings us to effects. Effects are available over here. So there's a, a different variety of different types. And as you can see, like in this scene, I selected a move effect and then I'm able to adjust my size and get different things. So I'm able to you know, define circles or different shapes and be able to create whatever shape I need to be able to adjust it, adjust the phasing to separate the lights out or fan them out across that effect and get whatever it is I'm looking for. Really cool, really based on the geometry of the room, works really nice. Same with colors actually, I've got a color scene over on did I stick it in this one? I think I did stick it in this scene. Uh, maybe I didn't. Where you can just grab a color effect. There's, you know, five or six different types. You can choose a predefined color palette and build your own. And then you can adjust, you know, how things work, how it works within them. And you can see we get a variety of really cool looks played across our selection of fixtures. So, what do we think about my DMX5? Like I told you in the beginning, actually before we get there, <laughs> then there's the touch screen, and the screen called Touch allows you to basically build a page for playing back your show. So then you can make this big, you can make this full screen, and basically be able to get to all of your cues on these different buttons and be able to do so completely on the fly and have it update. With this, there also is a companion, companion Android and iOS app that allows you to access this exact layout on a mobile device on your show network. And you can see we can put all sorts of different controls on here. Um, for example, this is actually a dimmer control, but it's over this particular queue, so there's no actual intensities on that queue. I've got a dimmer control here, which is tied to the actual control on those lights. Now, ooh! Ooh, 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 another thing we got to show you. This is cool. Okay, so if I close that, it redocks, all perfect. Um, but programming. So one of the biggest hangups I have always had with PC or Mac-based lighting software is a lot of them are not great at being able to program using physical controls, meaning that they require a lot of mouse clicking, pointing, things like that, which can be really, really annoying and, and really slow you down. Let's see if I go to a new scene here. I have got a MIDI controller right here. It can be any MIDI controller, though this is the MIDI Craft one, which is like a super awesome MIDI controller. And basically, I've set this up very simply by just right-clicking on different sections. Okay, I'll go into, or rather, I'll go into MIDI map mode, and then I can actually just click on any of these and then I press something on my MIDI controller, and I've already done this, so it's already mapped. And so this means here I can select my different rows of attributes, right? Dimmer, color, position, gobo, etc. And then when I'm within that, these faders, I've got five here, just control the first five faders here in the software. So I literally can just on the fly, just mix whatever I need to, and then I'm saving in my queue. So if I put this down on the desk, it is just so fast to just go, okay, there's my color for this cue, right? Here's my position. Okay, I'm going to move the pan. I'm going to move the tilt. You know, here's where I'm going to put them, right? You know, and I just, you know, quickly move the faders or move the knobs on a inexpensive MIDI controller, and I've got full control. One more thing while we're here. 
any effects that you have have different abilities for how they trigger. Okay. And so you can actually trigger them off a sensed BPM off the pulse of audio, etc. which is really cool because then it's like, okay, based on your audio input coming in, you're always reacting to that, but in a really controlled way. So opinion time, what do we think about my DMX five? Well, as you can see, you know, I've probably spent four or five days programming in this, learning it so that I can really evaluate it really well. That's what we do here for you guys on the channel. And I have to say, I am very impressed with my DMX5 and what they have put together here. Simply put, once you understand how it wants to work, you're able to work really quickly, really effectively, and able to create really great lighting for your events. Who is it for? I would say that my DMX4, 5 rather, is for people that, you know, need more than a simplistic level of control but really don't need the complexity of a professional grade lighting console. Because a lot of times you'll see churches and places like this put in professional grade lighting consoles and then, you know, the integrator just kind of leaves and nobody knows how to use it. I think that my DMX5 is a lot more approachable for people who aren't used to lighting to be able to work. Overall, there's less complexity, which means comparing it to a professional lighting console you might run into things that frustrate you that, you know, hey, I can't do palette based uh, updating or programming. That's true. It's a simpler console. The upside of that is you can generally program a little bit faster, especially if you're new to this. And if you've got folks using the software that really aren't lighting people or don't, you know, use lighting software or a lot, you know, they might be church volunteers. They might be somebody who helps out yeah, with your band. They'll be able to learn this a lot quicker and there's less things for them to screw up, unlike a professional grade console where you can get yourself really into a corner and have issues if you don't know what you're doing. It really is a lot simpler than that. And so that's what we like a lot. You know, it's one that we're going to keep exploring and we're going to keep teaching because I think it's a really great fit for a lot of people. And the fact that it comes with a one-time purchase cost, there's no subscription, um, it runs Mac or PC, the system requirements are laughably low, like in the sense of what it takes to run this on a PC is like such an old outdated PC. Like it's really not processing heavy and it's going to tell you here, the load section, how hard it is on your PC. You know, I'm giving it a big thumbs up at this point. It's something that we're going to be building into our lessons and be teaching more because I think for a lot of people, whether it's a band and you're triggering th lights inside of my DMX, um, from, you know, a DAW or, um, a, a music program with MIDI controls so you can have it on a foot pedal. It will do all of that kind of stuff. And the, the interface you get here is really nice. There's a lot it can do, a lot it does do, a few things it doesn't do, but overall, if you need a well-rounded, stable, reliable piece of software that's really key to us here, that is not terribly difficult to use, I would say give it a download watch our tutorials, join our learn stage lighting labs and check out our tutorials there that we're adding because this is a really a great piece of software that I think has come at the right time where a lot of the other consoles or software for the basic to intermediate level that we used to recommend have kind of fizzled out or not kept up with the new. And here we've got a program that's come out. It's really addressed a lot of the issues of its predecessors and it's, it's really doing a lot of good things. So check it out. Is it for everyone? No, but if it's for you, it, it really, I think is a great fit. That's going to work really well. Of course, we've got it at above AVL on com in stock, ready to ship for you. And if you need any help, of course, we are here through these videos through learn stage lighting labs. And if you need help picking out what lights to buy, you're, you know, looking towards the end of the year and you say, okay, we've got some room to improve our lighting rig, reach out to us. We love to make recommendations and help you find the very best fit for your lighting. If that sounds good, check us out at aboveavl.com. We'd love to help you with that and everything else that you need. Thanks so much, and we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye.